was always a, a feature of her own work. Another of the young Ella's favourites was the father of jazz, Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong, who of course influenced uh, countless jazz singers, because he'd invented a way of jazz singing that really was borrowed from his trumpet playing. I don't see how they don't get a go. I'm home about it. Doing an impression of Louis Armstrong was one of her party tricks, and she could do it from, from a really early age. She would revisit it, and it would turn up over and over again in, in performances. But as a child, Ella couldn't have foreseen that years later she'd make a series of duet records with Armstrong. They remain among the best-selling jazz albums of all time. Say, Pops. Oh, Pops, put that horn down and listen. I want to ask you a question. What's bugging you, baby? Well, have you ever been in love? <laughs> that was something I think she would have been utterly astounded to have considered when she was that when she was young and learning those things for the first time. When Ella was 15 years old, her mother, Tempe, died suddenly. It's here that the story veers away from Ella's own account. Um, uh, her mother, Tempe, died when she was 15, uh, not uh, saving someone from an accident, as Ella claimed, but suddenly and unexpectedly of a heart attack. And the next phase of Ella's life was to be much darker and much more troubled than she would have had us believe. While researching an article about 1930s institutional care of black children, journalist Nina Bernstein stumbled upon Ella's name in the records, allowing her to build a clearer picture of Ella's teenage years. Be good to me, please. Ella was orphaned at 15. Uh, her stepfather, the man she called her stepfather, abused her and she was placed with an aunt in Harlem. Just she got into trouble on the streets. She was scrounging for money pretty much any way she could. And that included running numbers. Uh, that's the illegal lottery. It was kind of a racket at the time. Close to she was a lookout at a bordello. I think they called it a sporting house. We touch too much. She got into trouble with the police. It really wouldn't have taken much for her to be handed over to an orphanage. So on your mark, get set, get But Ella ran away from the orphanage, although it wasn't long before the authorities picked her up again. This troubled teenage runaway was the perfect candidate to be sent upstate to a reformatory. Ella was sent to a girls' reform school in New York State. The buildings still stand, although it's now a men's prison. This institution was really a harsh place. There were these buildings called cottages, but they weren't domestic at all. And black girls were confined to two of the most overcrowded, the most dilapidated. You don't know what love is. You don't know. There was terrible abuse. Male staff members beat the, the girls. Discipline was uh, being shackled in your room, being kept on bread and water. You don't know what love is. Ella kept this secret all her life. She never spoke about it in public. She never discussed her earlier years. She was always talking in 
pleasant tones about that she had a good upbringing and all of that. She didn't ever talk about the dark side. And there was a price to be paid for suppressing this, in effect. You know, I think that she transcends that pain in her singing, and I think that in her life, it was harder to transcend.